Today, we are going to be uh, stressing the core a little bit. So this is gonna be a predominantly core driven workout. I think when it comes to yoga and the style of practice that we've been doing, we're, we're recruiting the core, we're conscious of the core constantly. However, we're gonna emphasize it today and um, try and, and stress that core a little bit. When we're talking about the core, we're talking about the pelvic floor, so the very base of your pelvis all the way to the tops of your shoulders. So it basically includes everything except your limbs. So your arms and your actual legs don't count, your head doesn't count, but everything in between is what we consider the core. So weight bearing on the hands and using our shoulders is going to be part of stressing the core today. Um, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and start in bridge. Um, and we're gonna be adding a couple different, uh, so as we start in bridge, you know, it's always a little bit familiar, but we're gonna be adding some additional layers to what we're doing today. Um, but go ahead and make your way into bridge. And first, let's make sure we're set up properly in our bridge. So take your arms long and place your hands on the tops of your thighs so that your feet are far enough away such that your arms can be extended in this position. Your heels are hip width distance apart and your knees are in line with those heels and your hips as well. So everything is in proper alignment. Think about lengthening through the back of your neck. And then with your hands pressing down on the tops of those thighs, recruit your glutes and then lift up into a bridge. Now go ahead and let your arms come down by your sides and heel toe your left foot in toward midline a little bit. And we're gonna lift our right leg up, flexing at that right hip joint. Now you're gonna take your right heel and you're gonna place it on top of your left thigh a little bit uh, proximal to your knee. So a little bit closer to your body than your knee, so right above the knee. Keeping your pelvis neutral, start to lift and lower your pelvis, pulsing through this left glute. Your right foot is active, and that heel is pressing down a little bit on the top of your thigh right above that left knee. So keep pulsing for five, four, three, two, one. Stay here, hold. Reach your right arm up, stretch out your right wrist by pulling those fingers back with your left hand. Still squeezing that left glute. Right hip is even with your left hip. And release the right wrist, unstack your right foot, place the right foot down and bring the right foot a little bit more in toward your midline. Flex through the left hip joint as you lift the left leg, left knee is bent. And then place the left heel on top of your right thigh a little bit above the knee joint. And then we're pulsing through that right glute. And if you're feeling it in your low back, you can give that right glute like a little tap with your fingers, let it know that it's the area that's supposed to be working. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold here, neutral pelvis. Left hip even with the right hip, extend your left arm up and then stretch out that left wrist. Again, lots of weight bearing in the hands today, so creating a little space for that wrist to start us in a functional position. And then release the wrist, release the arms down, unstack the left foot, place the left foot back down, 
and go ahead and bring the pelvis all the way down, feeling that sacrum touch down and feeling the weight of the sacrum on the floor beneath you. When you ground down into the sacrum, it helps to keep your low back neutral as well as the pelvis. Now we're going to take the legs and we're going to extend the legs up above our hips. Remember, you can have a bend in these knees, so don't worry about needing the legs to be straight. We do want the knees stacked over the hips. And as you find your legs up above your hips, go ahead and rock your legs forward and back so you're feeling these different angles of your pelvis. When your legs come forward, you come into anterior tilt. When your legs come back towards you, you come into posterior tilt. And I want you to try and find that neutral position where your sacrum is nice and firm and neutral on the floor. Now, I want you to imagine there's a block in between your legs and bring a little internal rotation of your hip from your hips. So as if you were squeezing something in between those thighs, we're trying to turn on our adductors or our inner thighs. Hands cup the back of the skull, elbows reach up toward the ceiling or the blue sky. Take an inhale here and exhale, lift the shoulder blades, lift the back of the head. Your gaze goes right beneath your belly button. Try and lift those shoulder blades all the way up off the floor. Inhale, come down and exhale, lift it up. Holding here, if you can hold the breath in exhalation while you're here. Go ahead and try that. Take little sips of air as you hold. And then full inhale to come down. Exhale, lift it up. And inhale, come down. Adding on, exhale, lift the back of the head, the shoulder blades, the gaze is right below the belly button. And then take those elbows and take them two inches to the left as you twist over to the left. Come back to center and inhale down. Remember to try and keep both shoulder blades lifted. Exhale, lift up and twist over to the right. Couple inches, right shoulder blade stays lifted. Elbows come back to center and inhale down. Exhale, lift it up. Now from your core, twist two inches to the left. Once again, the movement of your elbows is a reflection of this twist coming from the very pit of your core. Come back to center and inhale down one more time on the other side. Exhale, lift up, twist to the right. And come back to center and inhale down. We're gonna add one more layer to this. Exhale, lift, twist left, and then you're gonna take both legs. You've still got the space in between your knees and your inner thighs and you're gonna Take your legs two inches over to the right. You're gonna feel this like ringing out through your core. Try and keep that left shoulder blade lifted. Bring the feet and the shoulders back to neutral. Inhale, come down. Exhale, lift up. Shoulders two inches to the right and then legs two inches to the left. Keep holding, keep lifting through that right shoulder, twisting from your very center, and then everything comes back to center and down one more time each side. Take an inhale. Exhale, lift up. Twist the shoulders two inches to the left and legs go two inches over to the right. Everything comes back to center. Inhale down, exhale, lift, shoulders to the right, legs to the left.
back to center and inhale down go ahead and release the feet down and then heel toe your feet a little wider than your hips we're going to come into a twist variation that we haven't done yet control drop both knees over to the left as you keep the activation in the feet then we're going to take our left foot you're going to lift your left foot and you're going to place it on your right thigh so not crossing it over like you would in figure four you're going to place the sole of the foot on that thigh then lift that right hip as you squeeze your right glute and we're stretching this right hip in a really deep capacity right now so keep pressing into the right foot lifting through that right hip using your glute little pressure of the left foot on that right thigh and then if you want to add a wrist gap reach your right arm up over your head left hand catches your wrist gap and opens up through that space by opening up you pull the heel of your hand away from your wrist bone opening up space in your wrist and release the arms release the left foot as you rotate the hips back to neutral and then drop the knees over toward the right but your feet stay active you're ready to press into that left foot right foot lifts and you place the right foot on top of the left thigh and then drive through your left glute lift the left hip Another way you can cue or give yourself some feedback if you're lifting the left hip would be to place your left hand on your ASIS on that hip joint and or hip point rather and press and then lift up into the hand. You can also go for that wrist gap, left arm reaches up and right hand catches that gap in between the heel of your hand and your wrist bone. and mindfully let that all go so whenever we release any particular shape just making sure we're doing so mindfully and not reactively <sighs> one more set of core and then we'll move on into our circuit work so we're going to do a variation of dead bugs in this next core exercise so dead bugs we're going to lift our knees up stacking the knees over the hips this time knees are at 90. and then again i want you to kind of feel around for pelvic tilt so go ahead and take your feet away and feel how that kind of opens up your rib cage and it brings your pelvis into anterior tilt and then bring your knees really close to you and that's when your tailbone starts to overly tuck and you come into posterior tilt and you lose your low back and so find that neutral position and then take your knees a couple inches side to side and really ground into the back of the pelvis finding that nice neutral balance point now we're going to take the arms up over the head and when we do so remember what the tendency is when we take the arms up above the head the tendency is to come into an anteriorly tilted pelvis and have the rib cage kind of flare open so we're going to work against that tendency here if it's too hard to take your arms all the way up above your head then lift them up a little bit that's okay it's the same work it's just a different kind of level of mobility now for this dead bug move, we're going to move one arm at a time. So legs are going to stay steady. We're going to bring our right arm up and over, lift the shoulder blades, 
and bring the right arm to the top of the right knee. Keeping the lower body, the lower limbs as still as possible. So that left arm is still in line with your ears, your gaze goes to your belly button, your shoulder blades are lifted, and then take everything back down together, inhale. Exhale, left arm lifts up, coming to the top of that left knee, gazes to your belly button, don't strain the neck, inhale, left arm down along with the shoulder blades. Exhale, right arm comes forward and up, and left arm, or right arm, releases. Exhale, left arm comes up to the top of the knee and inhale, come down. We're going to add on now. So this time when we lift the right arm, we're going to extend our left leg at about a 70 degree angle. So it's not going to be a super flat angle. You're going to extend it at about 70 degrees. 90 would be straight up. 70 is a little bit farther. Inhale here, exhale, right arm lifts, shoulder blades lift as you extend that left leg. And then inhale, come back down with the right arm, left leg comes in, exhale, left arm comes up, extend that right leg, and inhale, come back down. Two more each side, exhale, right arm, left leg, inhale, come down, exhale, left arm, right leg, inhale, down, last time, exhale, right arm, left leg, inhale, down, exhale, left arm, right leg, and inhale, down, go ahead and release the feet, and take the arms down by the sides. Roll over and pop yourself up to hands and knees as we prep for dolphin, starting to work the shoulders, warm up the shoulders, because again, we're gonna be weight bearing on our hands during this practice. So <clears throat> elbows come down, forearms can be parallel even with the shoulders, or you can interlace the fingers coming on to the outside edges of the arms for forearm dolphin. When you're ready, lift the pelvis. You can keep a bent knee here. Think about lifting through your lower ribs, <sighs> opening and lifting the back body. <sighs> Knees can be bent and your gaze is back towards your feet. So we don't want the head to be looking through the arms rather looking back and a little bit up. Lift your left leg up in line with your hips, one-legged dolphin. And then we're gonna take this left leg and we're gonna take it out to the left, try not to lift it up as we do so, and then bring it back into center. Out and back in. So moving that left leg, we're gonna do five more, out and in, four, three, pure abduction of the hip, two and one, bring it back in, release the left foot down, and then lift the right leg up, heel is in line with the right hip. Remember, bend that left knee if you need to, and then we go out to the side, with that right leg and then back in, try not to shift the pelvis as we do so. Out and in, out and in. Five more, five, four, three, two, and one. Bring that right foot in right foot down, release the knees down, and then we are going to go ahead and stand it all the way up. Roll out those shoulders a couple times. Typically working front to back, get your rib cage involved. 
and then we're going to move into our circuit. So for our circuit, we're going to start in a bent knee forward fold, bringing our hands down to the floor and then step your right foot back, staying or keeping your toes tucked under, release the right knee down and then lift up into a half kneel, neutral pelvis, your front body is pulling up and back toward your back body and your back body is coming forward toward your front body. Ears stacked over shoulders, shoulders stacked over the hips, right glute is on and working. Interlace your fingers in front of you and then take your hands and reach them straight up over the crown of your head. Now when you do this, keep your ribs drawing down, keep that belly pushing back and up and keep your right glute engaged. Holding here for another inhale and exhale. And then release the hands, plant the hands down, and we're going to step our left foot straight back into a single leg plank. So your right foot stays down, your left leg floats, single leg plank. From here, we're going to take that abduction. So you're gonna float the left leg out to the left and back in and out to the left and back in, just like we just did in dolphin for five, four, three, Keep the back of the head lifted, two, and one. Left foot back in, release the left foot down. Keep the heads of the shoulders lifted along with the back of the head. Lower yourself all the way down to your belly. Release the tops of the feet and lift up into a back bend. So you're pulling the heels of your hands back toward you as you open through your chest. And then release a little bit, but the heads of your shoulders still stay really lifted. The back of your head still stays lifted. Roll over your toes, press up through hands and knees, and then find a downward dog with bent knees. Now we're gonna take our hands, we're gonna walk our hands one palm length at a time, all the way back to our feet as we sit into a squat position with our belly on the tops of our thighs. We're working hip flexion here. So we're trying to flex big in our hip joints. You can relax the neck. So don't worry about looking out in front of you. Keep the neck relaxed. And then same thing going the other way. We're gonna walk our hands about one palms like that at a time all the way out to a full plank. We're walking back and forth four more times. So hands walk back, hip flexion, belly to the tops of the thighs, happy squat, and then walk it all the way out. Full plank. When you get out to that plank, Remember your neutral scapula on your upper back. Try not to come into overly or over protraction and keep the back of your head lifted. Everybody finish in happy squat at the back of your, or hands coming all the way back to your feet. And again, that belly is trying to come on tops, on the tops of your thighs. Relax the neck here. And then we're going to do a little baby bear walk forward. So you're going to try and keep your hands planted, bend your knees as much as you need. And then we're gonna step our hands and feet and walk hands and feet up about three feet until we come into a forward fold. And then stand it up into a chair pose. Your feet are hip width distance apart. Sit your hips down, but lift through the heart, neutral pelvis, neutral rib cage, and bring your hands together at heart center. Just like we did in our core work, imagine there was something in between your thighs that you're squeezing and holding together. <sighs> Again, hands are at heart center, and we're gonna do these twisted knee taps. So you're gonna take your right elbow 
and you're gonna tap it to your left knee or the, right above your left knee as you flex the hips a little more and you twist to the left. And then come back through center and then same thing over to the right side, left elbow to the top of the right knee and back to center. So twisting back and forth. When you bring that elbow down, you're flexing at your hip instead of tilting in the pelvis. Do one more time each side, twisting left, twisting right, and then twist back to the left, keeping your right elbow on the top of that left thigh, and then lift your right heel up. Now we're gonna float our right heel or our right foot to the back, coming into a twisted crescent, and then step our right foot up, chair. Float that right foot back and up and back and up. Two more times, back and up, and then finish with that right foot back. <sighs> Big activation in this left glute. <sighs> and this right elbow is on top of the thigh. So we're staying really open through the heart, through the spine. And then we're gonna lift up and we're gonna cartwheel, not really, but we're gonna cartwheel the arms all the way to face toward our right toes. And then bring your left knee down and we're half kneel to the other side. Setting yourself up in half kneel. Squeeze that left glute. Pull your front body back. Interlace the fingers and reach the knuckles up right over the crown of your head. When you reach the arms up, your shoulder blades lift as well. Release the hands and then plant the hands on the mat. We're gonna shoot that right leg straight back, single leg plank, left foot down, right leg floating. And then out and in with the right leg, neutral pelvis, added demand, four, three, two, and one. Bring that right foot down, neutral shoulder blades on your upper back. Keep the heads of the shoulders lifted and lower all the way down to your belly. Release the tops of the feet and lift open through the heart. And then release that back bend a little bit, but keep lifting through the back of the head and the heads of the shoulders and press yourself up and back to a down dog. Bend those knees in your down dog. Keep your hips neutral as you walk the hands all the way back and sit your hips way back behind your heels. So in this happy squat position, we definitely don't want our knees coming forward of our toes. We're trying to come into that hip flexion and keep our lower legs behind, well behind our toes. Relax the neck and then walk yourself all the way out to plank and then back again. We're gonna do that three more times. Weight bearing on the hands. Feeling that structure of your core as you move from one shape to the next. Go one more time. Hands walk out and then finishing with your hands all the way back at your toes in that squat position. And then for this baby bear walk forward, you're gonna take about four steps with the hands and the feet or so. And we're trying to find this hip flexion so that we can plant our hands and then it's kind of an animal walk forward with the hands and feet. Once we get there, heel toe the feet so that they're hip width distance apart, and then lift the chest, but keep the depth in the legs as you come into chair pose.
hands at heart center. Checking in with your posture. So skull, scaps, sacrum, all in a line, even though we're flexing in all three joints, really, as we sit into this chair pose. And then this time we're gonna take the left elbow over to the top of the right knee or right above the right knee, twist, come back to center, and then twist left, back to center. Twist right, center, twist left, center. Try not to come out of the depths of your legs to the right and to the left. The twist is coming from the center of your core, just like when we were on the ground doing our abs. Finish with that left elbow on top or right above that right knee. Lift the left heel, float the left foot back, high crescent twist, and up to chair. Left foot back and up. Your outer glute on this right side is talking to you. Back and up back and up, finish with that left foot back. And then make sure you're telling this right glute, this is gonna lead you. You're gonna lift, extend this right hip and come all the way to the other side. We're gonna do this one more time each side. So let, uh, right knee is down, left knee is up. Now it would be easy to just kind of sink into this right hip and not have that right glute do much because it's tired. Tell that right glute, let's go. <sighs> Neutralize the pelvis, belly pulls back, interlace the fingers, reach up above the crown of your head. Hinge at your left hip crease, release the hands and plant the hands down. Shoot the left foot back, floating it the whole way. Single leg plank, neutral shoulder blades. Abduction, take that left leg away and back in, away and back in. Four, three, two, and one. Left leg in, left foot down. Release down to your belly. Same cues, heads of the shoulders stay lifted. Lower down, release the tops of the feet, back bend. And then release that back bend. Press yourself up to hands and knees, roll over the toes, downward dog. And then we walk those hands all the way back to the feet, happy squat, big flexion in the hips, and walk it out. Try and notice if you're Hips are shifting a ton side to side as you walk forward and back. We're doing this three more times, walking it out and back. And again, if your hips are shifting side to side, pull that core into your center to try and reduce that compensation. Big bend in your knees as you walk the hands back. Finish one more time, walk the hands out, and then finish with the hands back by your toes. And then baby bear walk up to about four steps forward. So about the length of a yoga mat. And then come up to chair pose, keeping the load in your legs getting a little flexion of the ankle, flexion of the knee, flexion of the hip. Back of the head stays lifted. And then uh, bring your, um, or come back to that core right at the beginning, twist from your center, and then flex at the hip to bring the right elbow to the top of the left thigh, back to center, and twist right. Center, twist it left, center. Twist it right, slowing it down, center. Twist it left, center. To the right, center. One more time each side, left, center, right, center, and then finish over to the left. So right elbow just above that left knee, 
right heel lifts and float that right foot back and right foot forward, right foot back, right foot forward. Movement of the hips, so pelvis stays neutral. If you wanna place your left hand on your sacrum, place that left hand on your sacrum and try, or just give yourself feedback if your pelvis is shifting around. Finish with that right leg back. Again, neutral pelvis. Keep that left hand on your pelvis, or on your sacrum if it's already there. And then from your left glute, extend woo, your left hip and then cartwheel all the way to the other direction, left knee down, right knee up, last side. Come into neutral pelvis, feel that stretch in the front of your left thigh, squeeze your left glute, interlace your fingers and reach the arms, hands up above the crown of your head. If you're not feeling a stretch in the front of your left thigh slash left hip, you're likely not in neutral pelvis. So see if you can tuck your tailbone a little more, squeeze that left glute a little more. Release the hands, plant the hands, floating the right foot all the way back, single leg plank, right leg is extended, and then right leg goes out to the side and back to midline, out and back, five, four, three, two, and one, right leg in, right foot down, neutral shoulder blades, lower heads of the shoulder blades stay lifted, release the tops of the feet. Now, as you come into this back bend, Keep your core engaged and your belly lifting up. Don't let your belly spill out down onto the floor. <sighs> Glutes are squeezing. This makes it a much more engaged pose. Release down, heads of the shoulders stay lifted, back of the head stays lifted. Press yourself up to hands and knees and then roll it over the toes up to a downward facing dog. Knees are bent, arms are straight and strong. Walk the hands back to the feet, happy squat, head is relaxed, strong breath, walk the hands back out, trying not to shift the hips around too much, <sighs> plank pose, walk it out and back four more times, or back and out rather, back and then out, and then you finish in happy squat. So as you walk the hands back, Think about lifting your pelvis up. So you're using your core to lift the pelvis up and keep it at the very uh, tippy top of your pose. Finish walking it out and then walking those hands back. And then surely everybody's favorite part of the practice baby bear walk forward. Hopefully it feels a little less awkward by this last round. Feet are hip width distance apart. Sit your hips back and lift your chest, coming into a chair pose, feeling that inner thigh engagement as if you were squeezing a block in between your knees. And we're going twisting to the right first, left elbow taps, back to center, right elbow taps and back to center. If it's too hard and you feel like you're losing your posture in your spine, you can even tap on the inside of the knee. So don't feel like you have to twist a ton here. If anything, we wanna twist left less in order to maintain posture and keep the movement in our core. Go ahead and do one more each side, finishing with the left elbow on top or just above that right knee. <sighs> Lift the left heel. That outer hip on the right side is gonna control and balance us. Float that left leg back and left foot up, left foot back and up. Relax your neck, take your gaze down to the floor, left foot slides back 
and up, right hand to the sacrum, neutral pelvis, left foot back, left foot up, three more, three, two, last one, finish back, and then right glute, big push here, extend, stand it up, and then bring the feet together, <laughs> and shake it out. When you're done, grab a quick sip and then take a seat. Coming down onto your back once again. And this time we're just gonna give ourselves a little true figure four stretch. So first, uh, come into a bridge setup. So feet are a little bit away from your seat and place your fingers in your hip creases and then flex your right hip as you bring that right knee up and in. And then extend your right leg up, spreading your toes. And then flex and point through your right ankle a couple times. <sighs> Bend your right knee. Take your right knee out to the right as you cross your left ankle over the top of your left thigh this time, or right ankle over the top of your left thigh. <sighs> and then those fingers are still in your hip creases Flex your left hip, not using the hands, and bring that right shin in toward you. Trying to keep a neutral pelvis. Try not to overly tuck your tailbone so you still feel that sacrum nice and neutral on the floor beneath you. Or on the grass, if you're outside the bed. And then go ahead and take your hands out of those hip creases and place them on the outsides of your legs. And then if you want to add a little more, use this to use your hands to pull the legs in a little bit more. Really emphasizing neutral pelvis in order to stretch the structure of the right hip as opposed to just shifting in the pelvis to make it look a certain way. Release the left foot down, unstack your right ankle, place the right foot down, <sighs> hand or fingers go back into those hip creases, flex your left hip, bringing that left knee up and in, and then extend up through that left leg. And by extend, it doesn't mean you have to go into a locked knee. So you're extending the knee joint, but it doesn't mean it has to be a straight leg. Spread your toes, creating some space in the fascia of the foot. And then with those spread toes, flex and point or flex and extend your ankle joint. And then flex your ankle joint, take your left knee out to the side and cross that left ankle over the top of your left thigh or of your right thigh. And then from your right hip joint, flex the right hip to bring that left shin in toward your chest, feeling that stretch all on the outside of that left hip. Bring the awareness to the weight in your sacrum, then bring your hands to the outsides of either leg and you can pull the legs in a little more so long as you keep that same sensation in your sacrum.
and release the hands, release the right foot down, unstack that left ankle. Both feet come down. Go ahead and take the arms out uh, to goal post. So 90 degrees with those elbows, opening up that chest. Take a couple full breaths here. Filling up the rib cage with the inhale and emptying it out with the exhale. And then roll yourself over to one side or the other. Sit, uh, go ahead and sit up and nice, short and sweet. I think that is it for our stress the core, uh, circuit for today.